Okay, so for this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and generate the circulation diagram that's going to be required for the drawing here. And so what I've done is you can see I've activated a view and I've gone into section mode. Uh, I have utilized some of the um, geometries that were donated by David here uh, to try and get this thing just so we have some kind of a spatial organization so we can see what's going on. Uh, what we're going to look at, uh, I've gone ahead and set my styles to hidden line. Uh, and what that's going to enable us to do is, and I'll turn off the section here, is we'll get a nice gray geometry. Uh, the subject of the drawing is not the geometry in the space, so try to make that look uniform. Uh, and we're going to end up manipulating the circulation. What I've then gone and done, if I can get this guy to select, I've drawn a line basically articulating the path that someone would take. Now you guys are going to generate two paths. You're going to generate a path for the child, and then you're going to generate a path for the parent. Uh, and we'll all, I haven't gone ahead and done each one of those. I assume that you guys can know how to draw lines at this point and uh, can go ahead and guide us through the space. Uh, yours is probably going to be a little bit more elaborate um, as you guys start to negotiate geometry. Um, but if you look, I've gone ahead and done this in the round so we can see exactly how that's going to work. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and undo that view. And we're going to go ahead and adjust the shadows on this. So I've turned off, you can toggle on and off the shadows using this. I'm going to change the month and year until I get a, an aesthetic that I think is appropriate. Then we can adjust the time of day as well to, to give us exactly what we're wanting. So I'm, I think that this looks generally pretty, get, um, pretty good. So now we're ready to start to export this. Now we're going to, again, I'm going to go ahead and, just like we did before, export as a 2D graphic. And we're going to export the circulation JPEG. I'm going to go ahead and replace that, and I'll go ahead and just start fresh. Then we're going to go ahead and export the CAD drawing as well. And again, this is just like what we've done already in the previous demonstrations. Okay. So I'm going to hop into Illustrator, and you can see this is uh, essentially the aesthetic that we're going to end up uh, developing to some extent here. I'm going to go ahead and close this down. And I'm going to go ahead and create and open a new document here. So I'll go ahead and open up my circulation diagram. I'm going to select our image, object. I'm going to do live trace. Sorry, image trace. Set it to six colors. As you guys go through this, you might see that this is kind of really loose and rough and not really what we want. If you need to adjust the settings on this, if you pull up this image trace panel from up here, we can start to really refine this and make this a lot tighter in terms of the way that the geometry hugs our uh, sampling. And so as we look in here, this will update. We'll get a little bit more information, a little bit crisper lines as we uh, prepare to take this into uh, the next set of information here. And again, uh, I, I haven't turned off the edges. Uh, but that's okay, we're going to end up just overlaying that on top of it, so it's not, not the end of the world. So I'll go ahead and close that. We're going to expand this, right-click, ungroup, go ahead and delete the white out. And we got some of these guys floating in here. We can clean that stuff up as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit Control-A, Control-C, and I'm going to hit Control-O to open, and we're going to go ahead and open up our DWG drawing, scale that to fit. We're going to paste this into place. And I'm just going to use the boundaries of our guy here to start to scale this in. Okay. And we're looking like we're pretty close in here. And I'm going to cut this and make sure that I get this on a new layer underneath all my line work. I'll lock these other guys so I don't have to mess with those too much. Control A, and I'm going to go ahead and just massage this into place, uh, just like I've done with some of the other guys. And zoom in here, Control A. It's looking pretty good. Okay. All right, so then what we can do, we're going to go ahead and lock that, and we're going to unlock these guys, turn off, SketchUp actually loads the section cut in here, uh, 
and here's the line geometry as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the line geometry, the stuff in here that we don't need. And so I'm going to go ahead and clear that out. It's a diagram showcasing what's going on in the interior of this, so we don't need any of that extra detail. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and then select these lines that were my path. You can see that it got split up because the way that this does it essentially just makes everything two dimensional. Okay, I'm going to right click on them and turn this into a group so I can edit that together. I'm going to set the line weight of this to five. All right, now you can see this is a nice sort of visualized path through here. And what we're going to want on top of that is we're going to want some arrowheads. So if we go under this stroke under here, we have arrowheads, and we can go ahead and Take your pick. They come in quite large, but if we just come down here, we can scale them. You see they go down. And this is function workspace that operates on uh, the idea that each one of these guys uh, is, has a start and end. Uh, and you can see that some of our arrows are back in the wrong direction. So we double click to go into our group. We can come in here, and if we select each one of those individually, we can go ahead and reverse those by clicking in the swap arrowhead direction. All right, so you want to go ahead and direct us through the path as you see appropriate, or as it functions. We can go ahead and get all those oriented now. We'll go ahead and select all of that, and I'm just going to scale this up a little bit more. Make this a little bit longer. All right, and then we can go ahead and hit Control A, and we're going to go ahead and give this a color. If I come over here to my swatch tab, double click on that, we can go ahead and we'll go ahead and set this to a purplish pink. And double click, and we actually are starting to have that diagram. That doesn't read as well as I'd really like it to, so I'm going to go ahead and instead of adjusting the color, I'm going to adjust the opacity of the layers. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and select these guys. So I'm going to select, I'm going to use a little trick. You, once you have something selected, if you want to select the opposite of that, if you hold shift, it selects everything and it inverts the selection, depending on what you have in there. So I'm going to go ahead, take that, cut that, and I'm going to go ahead and put that on the layer with my section cut. And I can paste that into place by going to Edit, Paste in Place, or Control Shift V. So I'm going to put it exactly right where it was previously. Okay. All right, and then. Okay, and so then what we can do from there is we can go ahead and I can toggle that off. I'm going to unlock this. Um, so I have all of my circulation space. I'm going to select hit it by hitting Control A, and then up top I have all of my options here that appear, and so I can drop the opacity down to about 30%. You can say I get this nice soft uh, image out of there, and we can go ahead and set that up so that this is at full opacity here. And that's essentially it. You can go ahead and then go ahead and file save this out. And we can go ahead and put that into layout just like we did in previous versions, in the previous demo. So we'll go ahead and oh, remember we have to export. And we'll call that. And we'll go ahead and replace it for this time around. CMYK, 300 DPI. Right, we'll go into layout. All right, create a new page. Insert. All right, and this is something important. Our colors here weren't quite right, and so when we exported this out, we were working in RGB, and what ends up happening is, and I've talked to you guys about this already, but the color didn't quite render out. And so if I want to, I can go back and fix that and tune that. Uh, for this demonstration, I don't think that that's absolutely necessary. Okay, so that's how you guys are going to set up your circulation diagrams.